The Scholastic Ball Report is sponsored by UK Sports Medicine and by Central Bank, Crown Trophy, Double Dogs, Mingi Beef Jerky, Panel Swim Shop, P Rats, Prepspin.com, Rafferty's, Raising Canes, Roberts Insurance, Sutherland Chevrolet, and by Whitaker Bank. Welcome into the Scholastic Ball Report. Gary Ball, my intern, Pierce Hall. Great to have you co hosting I'm today. glad to be here, Mr. Ball. We're well, glad you're here. And uh, we've got Brian Demon. He's the head coach over Boyle County Softball. They are ranked in the top 20 in the state this year. That's right. Uh, Boyle County's got it going on in pretty much every category over there. They're very competitive. Very competitive in everything, aren't they? Yeah, Boyle and I, County. And I know that being a football player <laughs> yeah, Catholic, right. they They're are player, very competitive. That's right. And our uh, feature is on uh, Michael Moreno. He's that outstanding player at Scott County High School. That's right. He's a special player. I got the chance to see him play at our place and he, he, he's got some special things going on. Michael can not only uh, pass the basketball, he can score it and mm -hmm. rebound. And he does all three phases that you need, right. and he'll be a good college player. Our scholar athletes are Jonathan Hawks, a coach's track over at Tates Creek High School. He always has some outstanding young ladies. Waveney Brooks interned on our show last year. Mm -hmm. She was outstanding. This year is no exception. We have uh, two young ladies and a man, and uh, two, they're all Americans, not just all state. That's right, and then they're good in the classroom, classroom too. Yeah. Very well rounded over there. 3.9, 3.8, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken, 3.6 is the lowest GPA. Yeah, and that's as that's high. That's still pretty good. That's pretty good. And uh, also, we got a another Sutherland Chevrolet Drive of the Week as we head down to Nicholasville, Kentucky, to Sutherland Chevrolet. Walker Tuyun is here. You know what he's going to do? That's right. He's going to keep me in the game. Keep everybody else in the game. <laughs> he's going to try to keep you in the game. Yeah. You were kind of you were a chore this year. That's right. Yeah, that's a long story, but. Yep. Yeah, he's going to keep us all in the game. And Izzy Gervasio is going to join Pierce and I in the rap. And what are we going to talk about in the rap? I don't know. That's up to you. That's up to her, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. She's with so. Boyle County Softball. Okay. All that coming up. But we know what you want. You want the best highlights in the state of Kentucky. These highlights from the uh, Sweet 16 with Scott County High School brought to you by Central Bank. And for the 10th time under Billy Hicks, Scott County playing in the Sweet 16 semifinals tonight. It was a rematch from last season's semis against Warren Central. The Cardinals won that game by 29, and they smoked the Dragons again. Scott County up 17 at the break, and in the third, Glenn Covington. The bank is open at Rupp. He scored 16 points. Then on the break, Covington just going to pull up. He likes shooting from long range, and he buries it. He hit four threes. Cardinals up 43-25. Scott County forcing 15 Warren Central turnovers. This steal ends with a bucket from Diablo Stewart, two of his 15. Michael Marino leading the charge with 25 and 10. Scott County wins it 70 to 52. Sunday, number one versus number two in the Sweet 16 final. Scott County and Michael Marino facing off with Trinity out of the gates. A 7-0 burst from the Cardinals. That's Bryce Long. He's got it. The first of four Scott County threes. Cards up two after the first. The MVP of this tournament, David Johnson. The Louisville signee buries the three before the first half horn. He scored 22 points. It was 22 all at the half. Second half, Shamrock's up seven. Michael Marino never quit. 12 points, 12 rebounds in his final high school game. That's sparking an 11-0 run. Diablo Stewart, the steal and the bucket. He scored 10, but Trinity owned the fourth quarter. This part of a 15-2 run, it was a knockout punch. And for the second straight season, Scott County falls short. 50-40 is your final. And welcome back into the Scholastic Ball Report. We want to thank Roberts Insurance. They're out in Richmond, Kentucky. Bob Roberts Insurance are on Main Street. They insure three quarters 
of this great state of Kentucky. Speaking of this great state from Danville, Kentucky, beautiful town over there, Coach Danville. I've, I've said this on the show many times, but I love that city over there. It's a beautiful city. It's a wonderful place to live. It really is. Uh, Coach, you have some good players back this season. Uh, you know, they'll play pivotal roles for you this season. You know that. Correct, correct. Uh, I've got uh, four girls here tonight with me. Katie Grace Chadwell, she's my lone senior. Mm -hmm. She's a uh, uh, our pitcher and a power hitter. Um, Keely Bowling is a junior. She's another one of my power hitters, and she can hit the ball to Acapulco sometimes. Uh, Kelsey Hinkle, she's an outfielder for me, and uh, then one of my bunnies, uh, Izzy Gravasio, she's an outfielder for me as well. Um, Katie, so you're the only senior on this year's squad, so what does that mean to you in terms of leadership or the, any different roles that you have to play on the team? So basically, we have a pretty you know tough schedule this year, and we play some really good teams, and Basically, I just wanted to like help us fight through adversity, and then like also just keep us positive and keep us focused throughout the season. And Keely, you play the corner. You play the hot corner. You play first base, so you play the corners out there, and you're considered a power hitter. So mm -hmm. uh, you know, my goodness, you can do it all out there. Uh, what what do you feel is required uh, going to be required of you the most this season? Um, I feel like I need to assume the leadership role. I think I can obviously step up a little bit. And I just feel like I need to block up the corners as best as I can and just focus on hitting the ball square. Um, so, Kelsey, you are, have been called the blue-collar blue kid on the team. <laughs> You've even earned the nickname the Shark. So what, what have you done and what have you worked on to, to earn this reputation, and how do you plan to continue that? Um, I just try to go out and do everything that I'm asked, like, asked to do and just keep it up. Like, our Sharks – that's just kind of like our name for like our power hitters and stuff and our like righties and then our bunnies are normally like our really quick kids that can hit on the left side. So just go out and try hard. Izzy, what's your uh, role on the team? I know um, you're going to join me in a wrap. Yes, so I'm a bunny obviously and my role is to get on base because if I'm on base then the sharks don't have anybody to move around and it's always good to have a bunny on. And whenever a shark hits like a line drive or something to drive yeah. a run in. Because those bunnies can really run around those base paths, can't they? You should have asked to give your bunny ears for you. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Give us those bunny ears, will you? There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So coach, what are what are we looking at in the district and the region this year in terms of competition? You know, every year with us uh, in our district, we, it's us in Gary County toe-to-toe, uh, -to -toe, and uh, I don't see anything different. Uh, the region is a very balanced region between us and you know, Rockcastle County, mm -hmm. Mercer County, East and West Jessamine, uh, Southwestern, Pulaski. It, it's probably one of the one or two most balanced regions in the year. So, you know, we just got to come out there and take care of ourselves and control what we can control. And and uh, I think if we can stay healthy and keep focused, uh, we'll put ourselves in a position to be successful. And you know what I hear when you mention all those teams, Southwestern and Garrett County, all those teams, those are very athletic teams, kind of like your Boyle County uh, softball team. So it's going to be a, a good year this year, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. I think we got some really good kids that are athletic and run, so we'll see what we can do. We'll see those bunnies run around out there on the sit <laughs> <laughs> only Coach. Coach, Mingy Beef Jerky's uh, like to present you with this Mingy Beef Jerky. So you'll uh, take that with you, enjoy that. And thanks for joining us on this classic ball report. Thank you, young ladies, and good luck this year. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. That is uh, Boyle County coach Brian Deem. And now we're going to this feature. It's on Michael Moreno. He plays for Scott County High School. When the final buzzer sounded on the high school season, Scott County was filled with some of the very same emotions they felt one year ago, finishing one win shy of a state championship. For senior Michael Moreno, it was another close call but one he won't have the opportunity to avenge next season. That was the last time that I'm gonna put on a Scott County uniform. Marino had 12 points and 12 rebounds in his final high school game, capping a strong Sweet 16 tournament. One night earlier in the semifinal win over Warren Central, Marino had 25 points and 10 rebounds. I've been so blessed to be able to put the uniform on for five years now, and uh, I've loved every second of it. And just to think that it's over now, it's just hard to swallow, just because I've been so proud to be a Cardinal for my whole life. Now that his high school career is over, Marino has a decision to make on where to continue his playing career.
And welcome back in our most popular segment, our scholar athletes, because it highlights young ladies, young men like this from Tate's Creek track over there with Jayhawk, my man over there, the track coach. Oh, Boy, yeah. you're doing a great job there, Tate's I appreciate Creek. It, yeah. I'll tell you what. Let's start with you, Ben, if you don't mind, because right. you have a high GPA. Yeah. 3.9 grade point average. So congratulations yeah, for that. That's pretty you. remarkable. And, and he has great hair, by the way. Yeah, and, and my man here. <laughs> 1600 meter qualifying time for state. What goals have you set for yourself for this year? Oh, uh, yeah. So uh, my first goal is to just make it back to the state meet. Uh, our region is really competitive. It's stacked with talent on both distance and sprint side. And there's only two spots coming out guaranteed for the state meet. So you want to be one of yeah, those two oh, spots? Most definitely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, hopefully, once I get there on that day, I can uh, go out there and place top three in whatever I'm running. So, Emma, you've got a 3.8, so you're lighting up in the classroom. And then last year, you came in fourth place in the 4x800 meter relay. So, what are you setting your sights on for this coming, this coming year? So, my main goal this year is to help my team win region and state, and then obviously be able to run to my best capability. And I'm sure you will, too. <laughs> With this man as your coach, I'm oh, sure yeah. you'll run oh, your yeah. capability. <laughs> Rosalind, how you doing over there? Did I get the name right? Yes. All right. <laughs> and you, I, I got so much to tell about you, it's going to take a little while, so we're going to have to take a few seconds here. With a 3.6 in class and an All-America status in track, your 60 meter time right now is still the fastest at 7.49 that's uh, been taken this year. You'll take your talents to East Carolina. How did you choose uh, East Carolina? Um, well, East Carolina, they were like one of the first schools to come and visit me at my home visit. And it was really just like me feeling comfortable in like the environment and the coach and like what I felt would help me improve and be the best I can be. So you feel like you can uh, take your talents and really uh, adhere to that at East Carolina. That's going to help you embellish your talents there yes. at that school. Um, Coach, what do you see in the future for uh, track at Tate's Creek? I just continue to develop young people and continue to let them just not focus on the track, but just also in the classroom because that's the most important part to this whole piece. Um, at the end of the day, we got a lot of young kids that's that's or young athletes that's really doing really well in. These athletes right here, they, they actually helped me lead those young people. So I'm really excited about how those other people will continue to develop, you know, over the years. So it's not really just me. They actually help run this team, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you, and I know they do. You mean that, too. I do. Oh, you yeah. know, uh, cumulative GPA, if you combine these three, it's about a 3.75. Mm -hmm. And the, your whole team is like that, Jayhawk. Uh -huh. So oh, yeah. that's a credit to you and what you've done there and what you've built at Tate's Creek High School, so yes, kudos sir. to you. Uh, ben and Emma, what criteria will help you in choosing a college? I know you're still undecided on your college. Yeah. Yeah, go um, So I just need- Girls first, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I need to find a school that like is academically fitting for me, and then once I have the academic challenge, I can find the athletic challenge as well. Uh, yeah, just like she said, <laughs> academics are a huge part, and uh, I also want to run in college, and so, uh, finding the right coach and team dynamic uh, is really important to me. Yeah. Um, so, Rosalind, you, like we spoke about a minute ago, you're committed to East Carolina to uh, run track there. And so what do you see in your future this coming spring in terms of what you'll run this year? Um, I'm really hoping I'm PRing in the 100 and 200 and possibly winning state. Yeah. And, yeah, just improving my times and helping our team win state as well. We're going to get out there to Tate's Creek and to Boyle County and see them play softball. We're going to get out there to Tate's Creek and see these guys. I'm interested to see them run track out there. Jayhawk, you got me uh, fired up about that. Sure. And here you go from Ryan Tyson. <laughs> if you'll pass that down, Ben, to each one of your teammates there. Thanks. You get a plaque. Uh, they go out there, and Ryan will personalize that for you with your name at school for no charge. But first off, like Jayhawk said, keep up the good grades because they will carry you further in this thing called life than anything. But uh, you're good, good track stars too so good you know oh, yeah. do it all academics oh, yeah. and and track those are our track stars from tates creek high school also scholar athletes now we're going to the sutherland chevrolet drive of the week time for the sutherland chevrolet drive of the week scott county and butler meeting in the boys sweet 16 quarterfinals right before the end of the first half bryce long gets the pass and hits the runner that beats the buzzer, and Scott County took a lead into the break. Take another look at it. Long going baseline with the touch. Scott County goes on to beat Butler in this game, advancing to the semifinals. That is your Sutherland Chevrolet Drive of the Week.
And welcome back in to our title sponsor, UK Sports Medicine Orthopedic Surgery uh, segment. Walker Tayun is here. Always great to have you on the show, Walker, because you always Appreciate give us good information about stuff we need to know. And we need to know this about the eye. What are the most common eye injuries seen in sports? Well, the first one you see a lot is a corneal abrasion, just kind of getting a scratch in the mm -hmm. eye. That's pretty normal. And then also you can get a... Um, a bruise or, or something, you know, a lot of times in, in, in basketball, you'll catch a, uh, an elbow or something down the post and you, know, you bruise that. And then the worst one obviously would be a fracture. Uh, you know, that's something a little bit worse. Uh, you can also get a laceration, get a cut once in a while too. Can't play sports if you don't have the good vision. Absolutely. So you got to have those healthy right. eyes. So you spoke about some of the more serious things that can happen are a right. fracture, a laceration. So what are some of the treatments for for well, an injury like that? One of the first things we want to make sure when you're dealing with the face or the head is you got to rule out a concussion right off the bat. Um, after that, it's more of, hey, is there any, any bony pain that we want to make sure that's okay? If there's any obvious deformity or if there's any uh, loss of, of vision, mm -hmm. then that's something we want to make sure that's seen by a doctor as soon as possible. And then what are some ways of pre pre preventing these eye injuries if, if uh, they're a common problem? Uh, well, when it comes to eye injuries, really the biggest thing to say, if you're in a sport that wears any sort of headgear, make sure A, it's in good working order and it fits correctly. So right now, softball and baseball, Make sure your catchers, your, your catcher's masks fit well. The padding is still in good shape. And then also now softball, the infield players now have to wear the face masks. Yeah. So make sure those fit well. They're not loose or anything like that. Lacrosse is another one that we're seeing a lot of now. It's growing up in this area. And so we work on that as well. But basically fits well and it's in good working order. That's good information there, Walker. Thank you, Thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Walker Tayun, we've got the uh, phone number and the website. It's right there. they got the walk-in clinic every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. there, UK Sports Medicine. Now we're going to these uh, final highlights. It's on the girls' Sweet 16 at Rupp Arena. It's brought to you by Whitaker Bank, uniquely Kentucky. Thanks, fellas. Semifinals of the girls' Sweet 16, Southwestern battling male. Reggie Cundiff has been dominant all tournament, and that continued today. She only played 18 minutes and scored 11 points. Very physical inside, and that paid off against the Bulldogs. Kennedy Harris added eight, and Callie Sheeran led the Warriors with 16. Southwestern, in its first ever Sweet 16 appearance, will play for it all Sunday at 2 against Ryle. Championship Sunday at Rupp Arena, the Lady Warriors taking on Ryle. The Lady Raiders open the game on a 15-2 run, but Southwestern fights back. Callie Sheeran scored 13. Reggie Cundiff leading the way with 16 points. Ryle, though, up 33-14 at the break, and they put it in cruise control. Lauren Schwartz scored 14. Bree Crittenden poured in 21. Ryle wins its first state championship 63-48. You know, they're a special group because um, they, they have been nothing but great to my family. They've been a blessing to be around. They've been a joy to coach. And, um, you know, you couldn't ask for better ambassadors for your school, your community, or anything else. And from Boyle County Softball, we got Izzy and Kelsey here. Thanks for staying with us on the wrap. And, you know, you got a big game coming up Tuesday night. Yes. You play Woodford County, the Lady Jackets, and they're, they're always a good softball team, aren't they? Yes, they are. <laughs> always bring some good competition. Yeah. And uh, what's going on at uh, your neck of the woods, Lexington Catholic? Oh, uh, Lexington Catholic. Uh, we're firing up for baseball right now. We got some. Uh, Andrew Stefaniak just committed to Wabonzi Community College, so he's really excited about that. And uh, we've got some good stuff going on over there. Uh, and that's, that is good stuff. And, uh, of course, uh, you guys are having a great season. We appreciate you coming on the show and uh, to helping us out here on the Scholastic Ball Report. And we thank Tate's Creek as well. So, as always, on the Scholastic Ball Report, for those you see and those you don't see. Keep your eye on the Scholastic Ball Report. The Scholastic Ball Report was sponsored by UK Sports Medicine and by Central Bank, Crown Trophy, Double Dogs, Mingi Beef Jerky, Panel Swim Shop, P-Rats, PrepSpin.com, Rafferty's, Raising Canes, Roberts Insurance, Sutherland Chevrolet, and by Whitaker Bank.